So a lot of you have been requesting for a side chain video. So today I'm going to be presenting a comprehensive guide on all things side chaining. Side chaining is a useful creative as well as technical process that every producer should get to know. One of the first times I've heard side chaining was by Daft Punk many years ago and I was intrigued by that pumping sound which has become accustomed to dance music today. It's a technique that can resolve mix issues as well as open up new creative possibilities. So whether you produce drum and bass, dubstep or house music, it's an essential skill to learn. By the way, my name is Stranger, and if you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with drum and bass and dance music, then this channel is for you. Comment down below and let me know what is your favorite compression plugin to use with side chaining. And if you like making drum and bass and dance music and love improving, then make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It lets me know to make more videos like these. Also, follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm providing additional exclusive content. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, boys and girls, we're going to be doing a video all about side chaining. Now, what is side chaining? Well, essentially, side chaining is when you trigger an effect with another audio signal. Most of the time, this refers to compression, when you want to compress a signal and trigger that compressor with another audio source, such as a kick. The most common application of this is when we want to duck a bass sound whenever the kick hits because the kick and the bass occupy the same frequency range and they're competing against each other in that range. So to make room for the kick, you want to duck that bass every time the kick hits so that the kick can breathe. Now you'll hear this ducking effect in all types of electronic music from house to EDM, even dubstep and drum and bass. But sometimes it's more of a creative effect where you want that pulsing effect every time the bass hits. You want that bass line to pulse after the kick to make that bass more rhythmic. So there's a creative and more mixing application for this effect. But generally, it's the same way to do it. Now, for those that don't know anything about side chaining, like I'm going to show you how do you duck a signal manually. So what you could do is you can automate the volume. And essentially, that's ducking the bass line. So here I have a kick and here I have a square wave bass. Now this is a very bassy kick so I want that bass line to duck every time the kick hits. So what we can do is we can automate the volume. Now I'm using utility because I just like having the flexibility of the utilities gain option here. That way you can still independently change the gain value of the track without affecting any of the automation. What we can do is add a point here and here. So now we're ducking the baseline every time the kick hits. Now you can play with the slope, maybe make it a little more steeper like that, or you might want to bulge out like that, depending on the sound you want, and just duplicate it across. Now Ableton has some really cool shapes. So if you hover over the section and right click, you can access these cool shapes for a more smoother uh, volume automation. Now I bounce the raw and sidechain audio down so you can see what is actually happening. So notice the shape respectively to the kick. So I would call this level one ducking for dummies. Just simply duck the volume of your bass line whenever the kick hits. And actually I do like this method because it is very precise because you're automating the actual volume and you have more control this way. Now there are actually tools out there to help you with this process. Devious Machines Duck is one. What I like about Duck is you have the flexibility to create some interesting shapes. And you also get some nice visuals here of the waveform behind the grid. Also, they have this filtering section, which is quite handy. You can specify a frequency range to bypass the ducking. For example, we might only want to duck the low end 
and not affect any of the highs because only the low end is conflicting with the kick. The high end is fine, right? So if you dial this back, Listen carefully and notice that the highs is playing straight, there's no ducking, but the low end is getting ducked. Now there's this crossover frequency point to specify the split between the low and high band. So the higher the crossover point, the more range the low band takes up. Or you could do the opposite where you duck only the highs, right? So that gives you some interesting results. So very fun little plugin to play with. Another really popular one is x for Records LFO tool. It works pretty similar to duck. It has some additional features such as a filter so you can filter that bass. But they both generally function the same way. It's just that each one has a couple different features. Uh, I tend to use Duck a little more because uh, I like the interface, but both are really good. All right, moving on to level two. Now we're gonna learn how to duck a signal using sidechain compression. So I have Ableton's compressor here and just expand on this part to open up the sidechain section. Now again, here's my kick and bass signal. Now just enable the sidechain section and where it says audio from, choose the audio signal you want to use to trigger the compressor. So I'm going to choose this kick and snare track here. So now that kick signal is going to trigger my compressor. Now it's not doing anything yet until you bring the threshold down. The threshold has to be low enough to catch the attack of the kick. And you can tell where the attack hits by looking at the low visual cue on this window here. The lower the threshold, the more the kick signal affects the compressor. And then another important parameter is the ratio. So that's how much is getting compressed. So one to one meaning there's no compression. And then infinite would mean it's infinitely compressed. Attack is just how soon the compressor gets triggered. So sometimes you might want to fade that in for a smoother sound. I say five milliseconds is usually good and we usually have to release quick. So the compressor re resets pretty much immediately. Now let's say you have some fancier compression plugins such as Fab Filters Pro C2. The process is similar. Again, they have a side chain section here where we can determine the audio trigger, so I'll select kick and snare. The only difference is you have to open up the sidechain window here and choose an external source for the sidechain. Just click that and then you can start uh, sidechaining. The benefit of these nicer compression plugins is you have access to these different algorithms, which give it a different character to the ducking. So very fun stuff. Another really cool thing with modern compression plugins is that you can filter the sidechain signal and use only specific frequency ranges to trigger the compressor. This is useful, for example, you might have a, a kick and snare track or let's say a breakbeat where you can't separate the kick from the snare and you only want the kick to trigger the compressor. So here, imagine I have a break here with the kick and snare. 
And let's say I only want the kick to trigger the compressor, not the snare, right? Well, currently the way my compressor has been set up, anytime there's a signal over the threshold, it's gonna trigger the compressor, whether it's a kick or a snare. So let's listen to it without the compressor. Then with. Notice every time the kick and snare hits, it's ducking that bass. Now notice down here in the compressor, there's an EQ filter section. So enable that. And we're using a low pass, meaning we're low passing that kick and snare signal to anything below this frequency range. So I've set it to 110, meaning only those low frequencies, which is pretty much the kick, will trigger the compressor. Now listen to it. And this is super powerful. Fat Filters Pro C2 also has a filtering section. For example, below here, you can turn on the high pass or low pass. Super handy. Here's another application of this filtered sidechain compression. For example, I have a big pad sound here. And these big pads have lots of frequencies. There's lots of highs and mids and it's competing with the snare. So maybe want, we want the compressor to duck the pads every time the snare hits. Now, once again, my kick and snare are on the same track. So we're gonna have to use the filter to filter out the snare. Now, this time I'm using a high pass and I'm keeping only frequencies at 900 Hertz and above, which essentially will catch the snare since the kick is pretty much all low frequency. So it's gonna skip the kick. Camel and Crooked use this method a lot since their tracks are very synth heavy. They have to make room for that snare to smack. Hey, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products. I have a gnarly serum preset pack with over 150 face melting bass presets. As well, I have some Ableton project files to jumpstart your next idea. But if you're not ready yet, you can pick up my free serum preset pack and my free sample pack. For more information, check the links down below. All right, so we're moving on to level three, which is advanced side chaining and ducking techniques. Here's another really useful technique for side chaining. You might have a top end percussion loop and you may want to duck it every time the kick and snare hits. So here. Now this seems kind of drastic because that kick takes up so much. So what you can do is enable the filter to catch only the snare so that only the snare triggers the compressor. So this is before. So this sounds a lot more smoother and we only want to duck the tambourines when the snare hits because those sounds occupy the same frequency range. Whereas we're not so worried about the kick because the kick is mostly low end. So this is a really groovy technique to add to your top percussion. All right, and now onto a very cool tool called Track Spacer, which does a more intelligent way of ducking sound. So what Track Spacer does is it analyzes the sidechain signal and it only ducks frequencies that are competing with the sidechain signal. So this is a cleaner way to sidechain a sound and as opposed to ducking the entire signal it only ducks the frequency range that is contained in the audio source. So in this example, I have the snare on a separate track and then I have the snare triggering track spacer. And then gradually increase the amount of the ducking or compression. And then on this window, it shows you the actual frequencies that are being ducked. So it keeps the frequency ranges that are not in the sidechain signal. So this is more a more precise way to duck a signal.
making more room for that snare. Now let's increase the intensity so you can hear this better. Now we have some filters here where you can specify uh, the signal to bypass this. So anything above this range does not get ducked. Same thing with the low cut. So notice those uh, low frequencies are more steady. There's no ducking. Now this is a little more extreme. Usually you would dial it back a bit. Notice how the snare is able to breathe a little bit more with track spacer. Now here's another really cool way to use ducking. You may have a stab sample and you may want to feed it into a return effect with lots of reverb. So here's a stab sound. And then I'm going to increase the send here to my reverb return down here. Notice how the reverb is drowning out the sound. So what you can do is you can add a compressor on the actual return track after the reverb. So I have this compressor here and then we're choosing the side chain signal to be that stab. So every time the stab hits, it's gonna duck the reverb. So listen to this before and after. So this makes the stab a little more cleaner because it's not getting drowned out by the reverb every time it hits. So the reverb is only allowed to breathe when there is silence in between the stab hits. So this is a great way to clean up your reverb and you can apply this to other sounds as well. Now here's another similar application and this is done with vocals. Uh, you might have a vocal with tons of delay or echo. I was in this long, 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 long. And that delay is drowning out the words of the vocal. So what you can do is, again, right after the delay effect. Now, this has to be in a return track. Just remember that. So we're sending the vocal to an echo return track, and we're applying a compressor right after the delay. So this is before. I was in this long, 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 long. I was in this long, dark tunnel. I was in this long, dark tunnel. I was in this long, dark tunnel. So this type of process is used a lot in vocal processing and in even in pop music, where they want to only have the delay come in when the singer pauses. Great way to clean up your delay. All right, one final trick which I invented recently. I don't know if this is something that's used in the industry, but I just thought of it. For example, I'm sending a breakbeat to a return track where there is parallel compression or New York compression being applied. So what it's doing is it's compressing the hell out of that signal and then it's high passing the signal. So, so essentially where it's bringing out the highs of this breakbeat. So here's the break without compression. And here's with parallel compression. Notice how sibilant and high energy those high frequencies are now, but it might be too much. So we, we may want to apply a sidechain compressor and duck parallel signal every time the kick and snare hits so that only in between the kick and snares do we have that high en energy. So here's before. So a lot more controlled. And once again, the side chain signal is the break. So every time uh, the break hits a certain threshold, then it's going to trigger. And I'm using the filter section to filter the kick and snare only. So it sounds a lot more cleaner and groovier with some side chain compression applied on that parallel processing. All right, so that was my ultimate guide on side chaining. Hopefully you guys understand the techniques. Start with the basics, and if you don't know how to side chain yet, then start by manually ducking your signal by automating the volume. Then progress into side chain compression where you can get into ducking your bass, 
ducking your reverb, as well as the other techniques that I showed you today. And of course, if you can get your hands on useful tools such as duck, LFO tool, or track spacer, that'll help you in your creative process. And as I said, side chaining is a useful and essential skill. So if you don't get it yet, watch this video a number of times until you get it. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video.